You're tuned in to Dynamics Talk, hosted by the one and only Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So in the previous weeks, I've released several videos about the new autonomous agents that are coming to Dynamics 365 customer service and contact center. Last week, I recorded part one of my video about the customer intent agent, where I explained what it is and what it does. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the setup of this autonomous agent. So all of the options that will be available to you. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we are in the Copilot Service Admin Center, and in order to navigate to the configuration of the agent, you're going to navigate here to Intent under Customer Support. Now, what you will probably see is a banner here that says that you have to set up the Copilot Studio messages, the billing for this first, because if you don't do that, then obviously you are not going to be able to use the intent agent. So in order to set that up, let me quickly show you how you can do that. So you're going to go to the Power Platform Admin Center, and then you're going to go here to Licensing. So you can do two different things. You can either go here to Billing Plans, and you can see here that I have a billing plan already enabled. So what I can do then is I can edit that billing plan, and I can just add or remove environments from here by just checking the box next to it. Now, the other way that you can set this up is if you go to Copilot Studio, if you have prepaid capacity. So what you would do is you would click here on Manage Capacity, and that will bring up a list of all of your environments. And I'm going to go ahead and search for my test environment. And it's not showing it, so I'm just going to go ahead and drill into my test environment. Here we go. And what I can do is I can say, give it a number, the minimum is 500. And then I can either draw from the available capacity in the tenant when I hit zero, or I can bill my pay as you go billing plan. So that's another way of doing this. All right. So once you've set that up, let's just go back here to the admin center, we can go ahead and we can turn on the customer intent agents. You can see here that you can't access anything until you actually enable the customer intent agent. So I'm going to go ahead and click that button. And as you can see on the top of the screen, this is going to take up to about 15 minutes and you're you're going to have to go back in here after 15 minutes and then refresh this page and then you're going to be able to uh, to see the that you now have access to these different areas here under intent discovery so let's just give it 15 minutes and then we're going to come right back so 15 minutes have passed and after this quick refresh you can now see that the customer intent agent is turned on and that also now gives me access to some of these items below intent discovery. So you can see here, add line of business, which is optional, manage intent discovery setup, manage intents and manage, manage intent groups. Now, what you can do in order for the system to generate those intents and those intent groups, what you will need to do is you will go through the steps here in the manage intent discovery setup. So when I click on that, just give it a second, it's going to allow me to add settings for intent discovery. I'm going to go ahead and clip, click on that. But first I'm going to explain to you what this is actually going to do, right? So this is going to look through the system and you can see here, I can select what I want the agent to look at. Do I want it to look at cases only or cases and conversations to actually uh, go through those, those data sources? And then I wanted to start to discover, right, the intent and intent groups in those conversations or in those cases that I have in my system. 
Now you can also see here that I have the option to set the intent group granularity here, right? Low, medium, or high. Now the lower that this uh, granularity is set, the less intent groups will be created, right? In this particular process. Now, what you see here in the record status, this is, as you can see, set to approved. I would probably set this depending because what this does is this is really setting the status of the newly discovered intent and intent groups. So if an intent or intent groups status is set to approved, that means that that intent group and that intent is ready to be used. So that's why I would recommend setting this to pending so you can actually manually go in and then approve the intents and intent groups afterwards. Now you can run this, you can test this a couple of times, right? So you can change the intent group granularity to kind of see the differences here. So once you've set this up here, you can hit test and there you go and then it's going to now run through that process it's going to look through those cases through those conversations and it's going to dig up right those intent groups and the intents in there as well now this usually takes uh, a little bit so this takes a couple of minutes so make sure that you are patient right this is again going to take a little bit if i hit refresh here you can now see that my simulation is in process currently. Now, obviously, the more cases and conversations you have in your system, uh, the better this is going to work, right? I just have an instance here that has some test data in there. I think maybe, you know, 10 cases and, and a couple of conversations in here. So I'm probably not going to get the best results here. What I'm going to do here is instead for you guys to wait on the outcome of this, I'm actually going to uh, show you the outcome that I did in a different environment. So let me just go ahead and switch to that different environment. So here we are in an environment where I already ran through that setup. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see here that this is my default intent discovery setting. I selected my data sources. I set my intent group granularity, I set it depending, and then I tested that. And then below you can see all of my test results. Two of the simulations failed, and then two of them completed. Once a simulation is completed, you can go in and you can export that data to Excel by just clicking on this button over here. That is then going to show me any intent groups that were created and any intents as well. If you try to export the results from a simulation that failed, it is actually not going to give you any data, right? Because with a failed simulation, there were no intent groups created and no intents either. Again, this is a simulation, right? So these intent groups are not actually created yet. That happens once you click here on setup intent discovery. But first, let's take a look at the rows that were suggested when this last simulation ended, when that was completed. So you can see here, my intent groups are item condition damaged, laptop battery charging issue, laptop monitor connection issue, right? And my store information opening hours. And then if I want to see the intents that were created, I can see we also have some intents that are not linked to an intent group and I have some intents that are linked to intent groups. So if this looks good to me, if I wanna go ahead and actually generate, create those intent groups and those intents into my environment, then I will click here up this setup intent discovery. And once you do that, at some point in time, you're gonna see that the execution is complete. Now, again, I ran this earlier um, and you can also see that I actually hit it a couple of times, right? This actually only runs one time and this is going to take a little bit of time. Even though I did not have a lot of data in my system, this still took quite some time for that to actually run and complete. So once you run this the first time, again, it's going to take some time to complete. And then after that, it's going to run this on a daily basis to update your intents, your intent groups, 
and some other things as well. Now let's go back here to the customer intent agent. So once you run that initial setup, you're going to see those intents and those intent groups, right? Let me go here to manage intents first. That's what you just saw in that Excel spreadsheet, right? Here's my intents. This is the group it belongs to. And then here we have our review status. So this is where we can say, you know what? I don't want to use that. I can discard it or I do want to use it and I can set it to approved, right? This is again, just on that intent basis. So I would have to go into each individual one and then set that status to either right approved or discard it. If we go here to intent groups, let me just go ahead and click on that. This is again, right, where all the groups are and I can see how many intents are related to those groups as well. And if I drill into that, right, you can see here, those are the intents. And then you can also see attributes, right? We talked about that. Let's just go back here and let's go into the intents here for a second. And let's go into resolve battery charging issue for laptop, right? So again, here is all the information related to the intent. And this is where you set whether or not you want the intent agent to actually use this intent, right? When it's trying to map that conversation to an intent. And then what you also saw earlier are the attributes, right? So here you can see those attributes that would actually generate that question for that customer service rep to ask the customer, right? You can see here, we have some of these that are actually discovered by the AI model, right? So this one, driver update status, battery health status, all created by the AI model, but I can also add my own attributes here as well, right? That's what you saw when I did the demo. So we had the check connections, laptop temperature, and battery drivers here. The other thing that you notice here is that it actually says um, whether or not we want to use this during runtime. You can see here, I have two options here, or actually three, I can say don't use it at all, or I can say always use it. So always use those attributes, always ask those questions, right? When this intent is mapped to a conversation, or I can say only use this if the criteria is met. And what does that mean? Let me explain that to you you'll notice that each of those attributes has a count related to the occurrence. So let me explain what that means. This is really, the occurrence really represents how many conversations are in the system where a customer service rep actually asked a question related to that particular attribute. So let me give you an example, right? we could have a hundred conversations inside of Dynamics 365 and maybe 50 of those conversations were mapped to this intent, this resolve battery charging issue for laptop intent. Now, during five of those conversations, the customer service rep asks about the battery health status. In that scenario, the system will add one occurrence count for each time that question is asked during a conversation, right? So this occurrence is not, a, let's say the customer service rep asks during one conversation five times about that battery health status, it's only going to be counted as one. It only occurred in one conversation. Now, again, with the example that I just said, right, it would actually add five occurrences for the battery health status attribute because we had five separate conversations where a question was asked by the customer service rep regarding the battery health status. Now, obviously these counts are for completed conversations only, right? And this occurrence count for these attributes is going to be updated in the background, right? This is, I think this is that same update that runs that I just talked about earlier that runs in the background once a day. 
Now, this is important because this is where that runtime usage comes in, right? So if I'm setting this to use if criteria is met, that means that this attribute will only be used if the occurrence for the attribute is higher than one. So if you have any attributes with an occurrence equal or less to one, they're not going to be used to generate a question for that customer service rep. So basically what this means is the more that the attribute is used, right? And that question is suggested by the agent, the greater the number of occurrence will be, will become. And that makes sense, right? Because if the question is not asked very often, right? Then we don't want the agent suggesting that question to our customer service reps. So that's how that works. And then we also have knowledge articles, as you can see here. This is going to allow you to add customer service articles to this particular intent. And as you can see here, I have one that I've added here, but I can obviously add more here. This is just existing articles that are there. I can just go ahead and check them and then I can say associate those articles to this particular um, intent. And the way that this works, you might remember that after I had asked all of the questions that the AI agent or the customer intent agent that it suggested to me, it then automatically came up with that solution. And obviously any point in time, the agent can request that solution, right? So the way that this works is the agent will first look at the associated knowledge articles to see if it can find and come up with a solution, if a resolution, right? If it doesn't find a resolution in that associated article, or if there's no knowledge articles at all associated to this particular intent, then it's going to fall back on all of the other uh, knowledge articles in this particular instance that I have created for that, right? So it does um, first look at the associated knowledge article. And again, if there's nothing there, or if there's not a solution to be found in that associated knowledge article, then it's going to look at any other knowledge articles that are in the system. Okay, so and then lastly, what we want to do, obviously, is we can enable this for support representatives, right? So if I click here on manage, you can see here, this is obviously related to those experience profiles. So if you have a profile that you have set up, you can just go ahead and click on that. And then if I scroll all the way down, you're going to see the intent based suggestions over here. So I can just go ahead and edit that. And then here you can see the intent based suggestions. And this is how you can enable that for your customer service reps. Now there's a lot of options, right? For those configurations. Is there anything you think that is missing? Please leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.